All right, guys, spring is finally here. It's the time of year we've all been waiting for. Flowers are blooming, water temps are rising. It is time for one of my most favorite techniques. I've been really waiting to share this with you guys, but here we go. We're gonna dive in depth, who, what, where, why, when, float worms. Another good one. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. Oh my god. Coming back this way. Oh my god! Oh, come here! Got you! You pretty! Huh? Yeah, baby! Woo! <laughs> yeah, baby! That's why we come, huh? Legal, huh? Legal catch. Inside right. the mouth. Inside the mouth, baby. Alright, if you guys follow the channel whatsoever, of course, you guys know I had a very big event last year on Lake Fork throwing the floating worm. One of my favorite techniques in the springtime when these fish are starting to move shallow. Um, it's an overlooked technique. It has been for years, but it is a very old technique. I mean, going back probably into the 70s, guys have been catching them on these style baits. And uh, I do my setup a little different than the traditional old school guys. And so I wanted to break that down for you guys and show you how I set up my rod reel, my line choice, um, my hook choice, just dive really deep in depth. Uh, and just how I set up my floating worm and what I look for as far as cover, where I cast it, where I cast it. We're gonna go through all that today. So hopefully we catch a few today so you guys can really see what I'm talking about. But if not, we're definitely gonna break down the, the technique and the setups. Rod, reel, line, hook, the whole gamut. Let's jump right into it. We're gonna start off with the rod. The rod that I like to use is a seven foot two medium heavy favorite hex rod. So not trying to push the, the rod on you but whatever you guys throw make sure it's extremely sensitive these big females they get up in these areas and they're not always pounding this bait and it's not always a visual strike so it's very important to have a very light sensitive rod and that's why i choose the hex i got this paired up with a johnny morris platinum spinning reel this is a 3000 edition 20 pound cigar smackdown braid last year you guys see me using this pink braid it's a prototype line from Seaguar they're working on right now, but right now my preference is this right here. This Seaguar Smackdown is an eight-strand woven braid, very smooth, and it allows you to get the maximum distance on your cast when you're throwing this floating worm setup. Very important because they're actually pretty hard to cast. You need the most distance you can get out of this setup. All right, lead -on material. On that 20-pound Smackdown braided line, I'm throwing this right here. This is brand new from Seaguar. I've actually been prototype testing and using this for a few years now, but this is the Seaguar Gold label. When I tell you guys there is nothing out on the market that even compares to Seaguar Gold label in, in terms of leader material, I'm telling you guys this is it. It's 12% uh, thinner than like let's say Tatsu and 18% stronger. This stuff is bad to the bone. Um, I absolutely love it. 12 pound is going to be my go-to for the floating worms on this technique. Something that gets overlooked a lot, and that's a hook. I know that sounds very uh, simplistic, you know, like, oh, a hook is a hook. Two things, you guys. I really like a offset round bend hook. I do not like an EWG style hook, which I know a lot of guys like, but this is how I set mines up. This is what I like to do, okay? So here we have a three-aught owner all-purpose worm hook. I like this hook for a couple of different reasons. You'll notice on the owner all-purpose worm hook that the gauge is a little thicker than your standard hook. What this allows is a little weight for casting and it gets that bait a little bit further down in the water column. A lot of these big bass bite, I'm talking you know five, six, seven, eight, and ten pounders, that bait will be just out of sight. Oftentimes you won't see that and so the weight of the hook is what actually allows that bait to get down there and then obviously 
for, for hooking up purposes. You can't beat an owner hook in terms of sharpness, durability, and just the sheer penetration that they have with that needle point, second to none. So that's my hook, that's my line, that's my rod, that's my reel. These are the starting packages for floating worms. Now let's talk about kind of some of the areas that we need to look for when we're throwing these float worms where these spawners are gonna be hanging out and hopefully you're gonna be running into some of these big ones here real quick. All right guys, this is another reason why I love to float worm this time of year. On a spinning rod, much easier to control, easier to handle, and I can skip this bait underneath those laydowns just like that where those bass are gonna be bedding. So what I'm doing as I'm coming down the bank, I'm literally trying to visualize where I think a bass would spawn. Like, where would, if I'm a bass, where would I put my bed? And I'm literally just doing that, and I'm skipping and casting this flowing worm around and, uh, in hopes that one comes out. What's, what's so cool about this bait, whether you're throwing the bubble gum, the methylate, some of the old school guys like School Bus, which is just a straight yellow. Um, I've even seen guys throw white and chartreuse. Um, whatever your preference is, you know, mine's is bubble gum and methylate, the two that I like the most. Whatever your preference is, <clears throat> these baits have a lot of drawing power. So even if you don't get bit necessarily, a lot of times those fish will just come out and show themselves. They'll swim up right behind it. And a lot of them actually eat it, but sometimes they won't. And what's cool about that is you can always come back later with like a drop shot, a shaky head or a flipping bait and pitch up to that area where you saw that cruiser or that follower and oftentimes catch that fish. So a lot of, lot of value in a floating worm. Um, more than just catching fish on beds. So of course you guys wanna know, how do you work this floating worm? The cadence, like how often should I twitch it? When should I twitch it? And just like any other bait, you kinda want the fish to talk to you. But what I've always done is, I've kind of used like a jerk bait rhythm for my cadence on the floating worm. So it's kind of a twitch, twitch, pause. Let that bait sink a little bit. Twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, pause, twitch, twitch, pause. That's kind of the way I work the bait. I've seen it where they want that thing sitting still. And so it's like a twitch, let it sit, one, one thousand, two, one thousand. It's totally out of sight by that point. And then boom, you feel that thump and you got them. So, you know, you kind of want to let the fish dictate that, but a general go-to for me is just a twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, pause. And oftentimes the strike occurs on the pause. Little dude, but I want to show you something. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Little dude, confirmation though. See them eyes? Yeah. He's trying to make love. Thanks, buddy. All right, guys. How am I connecting my fluorocarbon leader to my main line, my braided line? And that's gonna be with the FG knot. If you guys haven't already checked out the video, I have a FG knot video in my library of videos. Please search that up and check it out. I trust this knot with my life, okay? I think this is the best knot ever invented for a braid to fluorocarbon uh, joining. This is just an amazing knot. I've had great success. It's never failed me. You guys really need to be checking this out. Spend some time, learn how to tie this. Trust me, the FG knot, it's gonna save you down the road. All right, guys, let's talk rigging. How do you rig this bait? Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do it. A lot of my old timers, um, they used to rig this bait with an intentional kink in it, and I'll show you guys. Texas rig still, but they would purposely put a kink in the worm like that right there, okay? And what that kink did, as you twitch that worm, it creates this spiral barreling kind of like turn, which, you know, triggers a lot of strikes. I personally, I'm a little more traditional. I don't, I don't like to do that. Uh, I feel like the color and just the darting action of the bait has enough draw power to get fish to come over and strike the bait. And so I just Texas rig, Texas rig it like I would any other bait. I like mine straight. Hey, call me, call me new school or however, but that's how I like to rig mines. And those same twitches creates a darting action side to side, almost like walking the dog, but underwater. Those are just two different ways that you guys can try out rigging. 
Uh, both have been very successful, but this is how I like to set mine up. All right, guys, I hope you learned something today uh, about the float worms. It's not a secret by any means. Uh, it's a very old school technique, and the time is now, okay? The time is right now to be throwing this. So hopefully you guys can give this a try at your home lake. Uh, get yourself a good spinning rod, some good line, a good hook, and obviously a good bait and start twitching this around the shallows where those bass are starting to spawn. I promise you, you are going to hang into some big bass. So see you guys on the water. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Catch you on the next one.